Hi everyone. how we do uh, pulse uh, Doppler for pulmonary vein in adult through transthoracic echo. For more information, I recommend you go uh, check this clip, Anatomy of the Heart in Echo Part 4, Left Atrium, and uh, Location and Orientation. This clip, it helps you a lot for having a good imagination when you are going to scan. For uh, pulse Doppler of the pulmonary vein in pediatric and in TEE, I recommend go check this uh, clip and uh, this one in pediatric echo. All four windows, uh, each of them I explain separately, so you go check suprasternal nodes, plaques, and apical. Now let's uh, go and start our pulmonary vein Doppler in adult transthoracic. Pulmonary vein Doppler give us a lot of information and there are a lot of clinical uh, implication of the pulmonary vein Doppler. At top of them is left ventricular diastolic dysfunction, especially in those cases that uh, we have some arrhythmia or uh, severe uh, valvular disorder, especially mitral valve. Then we can uh, use those information from uh, Doppler, estimate endostolic uh, pressure and left atrial uh, function, especially during arrhythmia, AFib, and all those stuff. And uh, another is for uh, mitral regurgitation, especially when it is moderate to severe. And the last one that uh, we use it uh, very carefully is uh, for differentiation of the uh, constrictive pericarditis and uh, with the uh, restrictive cardiomyopathy. But uh, generally, my recommendation is that whenever you have any abnormal, especially on the mitral valve and any diastolic dysfunction or systolic dysfunction, always uh, do pulmonary vein Doppler and over 90% of the cases we can do uh, pulmonary vein Doppler. As uh, before I started to go there, I want to remind you that uh, pulmonary vein, as you know, normally we have two uh, branch each side, uh, right and two left. Uh, one top, we called it upper, right upper or superior pulmonary vein, uh, right lower or in lower inferior uh, pulmonary vein, and the same at the left side. And another thing, you have to remember there are a lot of uh, normal variant, those two branches. Uh, Sometimes those branches join together and entrance to the left atrium or there are more or some accessory pulmonary vein. Just keep in your mind when you're scanning, don't be surprised, a little, a little differences in each patient maybe you notice. Uh, the most common uh, window for uh, pulse wave uh, Doppler of pulmonary vein is apical four chamber view. As you can see here, our sector passed through this uh, plate and you can see from the left side of patient, our marker side, this side, uh, cut the uh, left uh, lower pulmonary vein or left inferior pulmonary vein. And uh, our, uh, this side, right side of the sector, pass through the upper, right upper pulmonary vein, this one. And you can see on this uh, apical full chamber view, this next, your landmark is intraatrial septum, exactly goes past to next to the intraatrial septum. So that uh, right upper pulmonary vein is the most common uh, vein that we use parse Doppler. Forgetting uh, the lower upper, uh, right lower or inferior pulmonary vein, we have to just twist a little contract clockwise or fan uh, down, fan inferior, almost close to the basal view. In that case, we will see right lower pulmonary vein or right inferior pulmonary vein 
almost the same spot, maybe a little less left or right, but at the same spot. As you can see, left lower pulmonary vein here is almost perpendicular to the our sound vein here. You can see very clear the duct and vein, but you don't see color and because it's perpendicular to the sound wave. So you will not see too much color on the left lower pulmonary vein or left upper pulmonary vein, and you will not have a strong and correct and conclusive pulse wave Doppler. So in other words, most of the time we do right upper or right lower pulmonary vein. For getting this one, we have to do maneuver later. I am going to talk in the short axis or in the apical tree, maybe we can get this one better Doppler. But in apical, it's almost only we get uh, up uh, right pulmonary vein parse Doppler, on, unless we go completely off axis and we bring our probe here, that is almost impossible because we will not have window at that level. Uh, before I forget, I want to remind and remember you again uh, that uh, I, this, all those schematic uh, pictures are from the uh, medical uh, uh, Toronto University. Go this website and they have a very practical and useful uh, virtual echocardiography software. You can practice all those uh, sector view and anatomy too. Now let's see uh, how we have to get it correct, optimize the, our pulmonary vein, and do pulse Doppler, and how we measure in apical 4. This, we can see a very clear uh, pulmonary vein at the level of close to the intraatrial septum, as you can see here, and we put it uh, color you can see blood goes positive shift toward the uh, left atrium. In those cases that you cannot see a pulmonary artery, just fan a little up or down toward the bed or uh, toward the roof slowly and watch this area. You most of the time with that one or if it doesn't help you, a little twist clockwise and counterclockwise as you can imagine here because you are blindly scanning, you are not sure exactly uh, cutting your uh, sector uh, plane pass through the vein or not, just twist millimeter counterclockwise or clockwise and watch this area. And for making much better, you can put color because on, like, like these cases, you don't see duct, but when you put color, most of the time you can see blood flow goes through the pulmonary vein here, right upper pulmonary vein, go to the left uh, atrium. If still with that maneuver didn't help you, you have to make sure your color optimizing correctly. For that matter, increase your gain, uh, color gain to the until blooming, then decrease until blooming disappear. If still you didn't see pulmonary vein uh, flow through that, uh, make sure that your wall filter is below 100. And even if in that case didn't help you, decrease your color scale slowly below 50. Uh, here usually we have set, set up for 55 to 60. Decrease to 50 or sometimes even decrease up to 40. 100% you can see uh, blood start showing up. If it's still, uh, even if it's still with this one didn't help you, Try as the patient breathe in, breathe out, suddenly it show at that spot. Just don't forget, slowly millimeter fan up and watch the, this area or fan down to the bed, tip of the probe toward the bed and watch this area until color show up. Then in that case, put your sample volume uh, about one to two centimeter inside of the pulmonary vein is the best way you can get strong and clear uh, pulse rate doppler of pulmonary vein. Two or three components usually. Uh, S uh, uh, that uh, correspond to the systolic, D diastolic, and AR or atrial reverse. 
S is when the, the left ventricular systolic starts and so create negative pressure on left atrium and blood goes to the uh, left atrium. D uh, is after the ostol because the left atrium empty, so pressure in left atrium dropped and so blood again rush toward the left atrium at correspond after T. S correspond almost after QRS close to the T and D correspond after uh, T that almost at the level of after rapid feeling here before P and AR is after P wave as you can see here and you, you always remember that when you want to determine which one is S or D always correspond with the uh, EKG depending on the hemodynamic of the patient, uh, the osteolytic dysfunction, regurgitation or not, they can change their relationship. Normal situation is S almost equal or more than D. But in any situation, uh, the osteolytic dysfunction, severe regurgitation, those relationships change. So don't be uh, fooled by the size of the D and S. Many cases, uh, you will see on the S has two components here as you can see very clear S1 and S2 S2 is correspond to the peak of the usually T wave and S1 after QRS for the cal uh, putting using cal and calculation we measure S2 and D uh, not the S1 for the AR we have to one peak had here negative shift and one duration from the uh, end of the D and before and correspond with the R here end of that this is AR duration and here is peak of the AR. Uh, pulmonary vein Doppler in apiculture as you can see our sector passed through to the almost entrance of the right uh, pulmonary veins both of them here for that uh, purpose to get a pulmonary vein doppler we just we have to a little fan to the left of uh, right of the patient more or twisting a little more as you can see here more counterclockwise and suddenly we can find here uh, pulmonary vein, right pulmonary vein, it doesn't get clear which one is that, is uh, upper or lower, superior or inferior, uh, any of them that's fine, and our cursor is parallel to the, uh, our flow is parallel to the sound beam, so we can have very nice um, uh, pulse wave doppler on pulmonary vein. You have to put as much as far here, this is spot will be perfect for putting sample volume and put pulse doppler. As you can see here in apical tree, if we are a little fan or sliding to the uh, left of the patient or twisting a little more clockwise, as you can see a little off axis, we can see uh, actually here uh, left pulmonary vein here is anterior to the thoracic descending aorta here this one that usually uh, is entrance of both of those uh, superior and inferior left pulmonary vein. But the problem with apical uh, tree in this view, we cannot do pulse doppler because the sound beam almost perpendicular. So we will not have very uh, clear and good and conclusive pulse wave doppler for the left pulmonary vein. For left pulmonary vein, we can go do on the plaques or uh, PZAX. Let's go see how. For uh, plaques, uh, we are going to do it as a classic way when we have good plaques. Then we should start uh, focusing on the here at the level of the thoracic descending or the food color here. And then with slowly after optimizing color Doppler, everything that I talk about that slowly fan to the left of patient or slide to the uh, left of the patient or 
twist a little clockwise more it become off axis or no slide medial and fan lateral to the left side of the patient slide probe here and fan that way so and we put coloring and optimizing you can see anterior to the front of the uh, thoracic descending aorta you can appreciate very easy a blood flow positive shift goes toward the left atrium especially in this case in uh, pediatric you can see very easy and much better so this is a pediatric and in the left uh, pulmonary vein very obvious and our cursor can be parallel uh, to the flow and get a strong envelope in this case if you want to get more parallel just you have to move your probe a little more toward the medial Mo means your probe here move a little this way you don't care about the aorta or any other left ventricle just you are focusing on the pulmonary vein so do uh, be flexible and do maneuver with heel toe sliding probe a little more toward the aorta and medial of the patient and heel toe make it as much as possible parallel to the flow and put some pelvic volume at here and do uh, Doppler very easy if we cannot get the uh, left pulmonary vein on the plaques we have another option and that is PZAX and a supraesternal notch uh, window for the PZAX uh, we do as a classic we can see here we put uh, our cursor the way the direction of the sector as you can see is almost perpendicular to those uh, two uh, vein here left pulmonary vein especially superior as you can see here this is our sector from the posterior you can see posterior of the heart and on this image that is almost the same uh, view of this one you can appreciate all those structures especially here appendage wedge shape goes next to the aorta and open to the left atrium here we have left upper pulmonary vein but unfortunately this left pulmonary vein is almost perpendicular to the sound wave and we don't see not color and we cannot get doppler uh, but here below the left upper pulmonary vein we have left lower pulmonary vein but because of the angle of the our sector we cannot see on this view we have two options one first option that we move our transducer go approach higher mean slide your probe higher at this level then fan down in that case it looks like off axis between the supraesternal notch and p's ax at this level and then fanning down our left lower pulmonary vein here you can see you can appreciate it very easy especially on this one on the supraesternal notch you can see here is left lower pulmonary vein left upper pulmonary vein still is parallel to the sound width it doesn't help us for doppler but for left pulmonary vein lower we can put sample volume here or if we can do in this technique go higher and fan down suddenly we can see exactly at this level next to the descending thoracic aorta and we do pulse doppler if we twist a little as you can see here to use a little more clockwise uh, and uh, playing with maneuver you can see right upper pulmonary vein at this level on this one you don't see it because we are approaching low this is the, from the this uh, approach if you want to see right side you have to slide higher and a little twisting more uh, counter, uh, clockwise until you see the right side but on the uh, supraesternal notch or up ac upper axis for the PZAX high axis of the PZAX we twisted our sector around a marker between 2 to 2 Terry and then with fanning down toward the foot of the patient and twisting less or more we can appreciate uh, right upper pulmonary and next to that uh, right lower pulmonary vein in this view very easy i should emphasize that 
in those cases that uh, we do pulmonary vein pulse Doppler for the uh, grading of um, significant MR, uh, for example, here even is not significant, it's mild, but anyway, if it's, uh, we think this is a significant MR, we, have, we not only should do pulse Doppler on the apical 4 or apical 3 for the right pulmonary vein, we have to do pul uh, pulse Doppler on the left pulmonary vein uh, 2. In, for that purpose, beside of this, we have to do on the plaques or PZAX and get a pulse Doppler for the uh, left uh, pulmonary vein 2. Up to the next time, have a wonderful time.